Well, welcome uh, everybody to this uh, special uh, meeting of cabinets. Um, thank you for your uh, attendance. So we'll go straight into uh, item one, which is the uh, members' code of conduct. Do, do any of our members need to declare any interest, Jeanette? Thanks, Bill. It's just a personal interest on agenda item two, either in the road uh, where the explosion took place. Anybody else? No. No? Okay. So, uh, we'll go <coughs> on to uh, item two, which is the uh, New Ferry and Regeneration Strategic Acquisitions Report. So, I'll just say a few words um, about this. So, clearly, we've still got some big challenges about um, rebuilding the community and the, 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 the town in New Ferry following the, the horrendous gas explosion in March. Um, of last year. Um, I'm pleased that the council's been able to at least provide some help through our uh, reserves. You know, we've, we've given about 400,000 to help with recovery efforts, um, but we, we've still got a huge um, job to do there to help those businesses um, that lost their properties and their residents, <coughs> lost their, their houses. Um, and uh, you know, uh, having spoken to a number of those those people, uh, there's still uh, there's still a lot of kind of people still suffering traumas from, from from what happened, even even though it's um, you know uh, well over uh, 18 months ago. So I, I think as a council we can't um, sort of rest on our laurels. I, I do. Say this, and not out of any kind of um, um, political motive, but I am disappointed about the government's lack of response to repeated requests for financial assistance um, for that community. Um, you know, I've written um, on a number of occasions to the Secretary of State, to the Minister. Um, I have lobbied um, the Minister personally when he came came up to New Ferry. Um, I know Alison McGovern, the MP, asked a question, I think it was last week, in the, the House of Commons uh, to Theresa May. Um, she's met with James Brokenshire, the Secretary of State. So we are doing everything we can to continue to lobby um, for, for help for New Ferry. And in, in the same way, my personal view is in the same way as, as the government have made um, uh, funding available for residents and businesses um, in other tragedies around the country, notably. Grenfell and Salisbury and other, there were other examples. So far, we, we've had nothing for you. Very glad. I do think we need to keep the pressure on government. I do think they have got a, a, uh, a responsibility to respond to the, to the reasonable requests for help that, that, that they've had from us as, <coughs> as the um, elected representatives, but also from, from that community. So um, it's against that background that we bring this report forward this morning which is around um, a, an allocation of funding from our strategic acquisitions program within the capital, uh, within the capital program of some 1.3 million to undertake some um, work around uh, 16 vacant properties in New Ferry, which we want to take under our ownership and bring up to a good standard so we can attract, hopefully, developers to build new houses maybe some retail development, and that, in my view, will kickstart um, the regeneration of New Ferry, which is what we need to do now. Just going back to the <coughs> conversations with the government, so we've had a, we've done a piece of, a detailed piece of work um, in terms of consulting with residents and businesses, and we've produced a regeneration plan for New Ferry, which has again been with the government now for the best part of the last year. Uh, we've had some help from Home England, but I think, again, you know, the, the scale of the development is something that needs government intervention. So that regeneration plan has been sitting in the, um, in the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, and again, we've still not seen any tangible evidence that the government are going to back it financially. So this is uh, a report which uh, asks Cabinet to agree to um, release this allocation for the capital programme which at least will, will give us a, a, a 
think, a fighting chance, if you like, of really kind of bringing them back about some high quality regeneration. And I, I, I'm convinced that with um, with the commitments, with the imagination, we can have a good quality scheme there. It's on the doorstep of Port Sunlight, which is one of our you know premier areas, really. really. And I think it can, uh, if it's imaginatively developed, can be can be promoted and developed as a really high quality and good place to live, invest, and work. Um, so I, I do think this is a this is a, a way of us as a council at least um, getting something going. But that doesn't take away and it's the recommendation to that we need to keep on making the case to the government that they need to step up to the plate as well. So in, in, in essence, though, though, those are the um, recommendations to agree the £1.3 million pounds allocation to uh, acquire these, these key sites, which are, uh, are set out um, in, the, in the reports, uh, and then to um, continue to lobby government for funding to ensure we get a further deal for, for the people of the area. Right, questions? Bernie and then Jeanette. Thank you, Phil. Um, yeah, I totally agree with this. Once again, it's an example of the council stepping in to help the ferry birds. The government, yet again, hasn't stepped in, but it's another example of the government being very reluctant to help anybody up this end of the country in the northwest. Once again, we're left to Flandreau, who's down south, maybe put their hands in their pockets very, very, very quickly. Um, I think it's a disgrace the way the government has treated the people of New Ferry, an absolute disgrace the contempt that they've shown mm -hmm. by not giving any, not one single penny of assistance has been given. Whereas up here in the northwest, we've done everything we can to find money and to, to help people out. And it's a beautiful area to live in. It's got, a, a, as you say, it will offer enough to offer people to come along and, and want to develop in that area. So the council are doing everything they can without any support, once again, of the government. And I, I, I think this is great, but I do think you need to carry on lobbying as best we can, as forceful as we can. Um, but I don't think they'll be I don't think they'll be ashamed of themselves. I don't think they care to be honest. Um, but I'm, I'm all in favour of this, so you know that very much will bring forward. Okay. Jeanette? Thanks, Phil. Yeah, it's just to echo what Bernie said. I mean, as a resident of Port Sunlight, but in the actual road where the explosion took place, I can tell you it was utter carnage that night. It was just horrific. I was evacuated, people were walking around dazed. Um, and it's still like that now. There's still a massive big hole, a massive big space where there used to be a dance school and a furniture shop. And I can't tell you that how reassuring it was every day to get up and to see the emergency services there, to see David Ward, who did a fantastic job, who was there all, you know, every day. I left my house and I would see David. Um, and you said that they won't feel any shame on the work this government because they haven't got a sense of shame to feel. It's, it's beyond me, it's actually beyond me as someone who's lived in amongst it, how central governments have not stepped in and helped New Ferry. It's just. It doesn't, it just, I just can't understand why they wouldn't do that, but they haven't. And I'm really, really pleased that the council has stepped up to the plate. And just with my finance hat on, it just shows how we do need reserves in place for something as unlikely as this that's happened. And hopefully it will never happen again. For all those people who tell us to run our reserves, this is quite clearly a good reason not to do so. I'm really pleased about this. So. Yeah, Phil. Thanks, Phil. I just, I just have to uh, echo what people are saying. I, I find it absolutely astonishing that the government has yet to act with this. And I share your disappointment, but worse than that, I think it's important. I think this is an utter dereliction of duty. And the people of New Ferry must be wholly aware of it and they can't help what adds to their trauma and anguish. I think the government should be ashamed. I'm hoping when cooler heads, I don't know, hopefully take, take on the government role. Those people look back at them both feel ashamed, but just for now, I hope that they do the right thing and join the World Council in support of the family and family the yeah. George? Just very quickly, Phil, and just to echo the sentiments of my colleagues uh, and analysts this matter. Um, when this disaster happened, I think that everyone thought that there would also have to be a, um, a, a reaction, in particular from the woman. Uh, to come down. The only reaction we actually had over the past 18 months while it's, it's been taking place is 
Jig Bay, BMB, came down there. Uh, spoke software that went away. I've never heard of the word from them since. So these are many alive. They look blue. Uh, well, all of us were gone. We just have to take the place. And never even had the, um, the, the will to come across the water and see the people who were very kind of people uh, when a disaster like this had taken uh, over their lives. And there's still an old one gentleman who's still suffering severely from them uh, impacts as of today. So I just suppose everything that you said for, I suppose this 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 going forward. And I do hope that Theresa May, um, after her statement in the Commons last week, when she answered uh, Alison McGovern uh, at question time uh, and turned around and said that I will take control of the letter that went to James Popenshaw and I will respond to that. I hope she responds in the correct way. Thank you. Okay, thanks, George. Angie? Thanks, Val. Well, I just wanted to say something about the community in, in New Ferry as well. And, you know, it shows how the people there have have come together, you know, in what they what they have done. You know, they they could have all crumbled, you know, and kind of stayed locked down, but they haven't. They have, you know, really come together um, and it's amazing what they they've done there and their community spirit and um, resilience. I think it's amazing. Um, can, can I just mention a couple of other things before we, we conclude this item? I mean, we're, you know, again, um, an example of us being proactive as a council. We're still um, working on the uh, money that Steve Rotherham and the Metro Mayor has made available for town centres, and we are um, applying for half a million for that for new ferry. So we will, we will, very, we're very hopeful about being able to access that funding. So I think, you know, Steve, Steve Rotherham and Metro Mayor is playing his part. The other thing I want to do is just to echo Jeanette in thanking David Ball, who's sitting at the back here, because David has worked tirelessly um, on, on the new ferry um, uh, sort of uh, issues, and I know um, negotiating the